Hey, how's it going? So this film is somewhat out of right field. I have two topics I am trying to address today, which I will get to in a minute. But what I'm gonna show you first has nothing to do with either topic. Just came out of right field. My allergies are killing me. For some reason in the past, I made these prints. Now, this was the day that I moved to New Mexico. I'm, I've borrowed this truck, this Dodge Cummins turbo diesel with all the extra gauges. It was a very cool truck. I blew it up on the freeway and had to abandon it. No joke. But that's another story. I made these prints. I don't know why I made these prints. I don't, I don't need these prints. They ended up on my desk out of nowhere a couple of days ago. My wife had found them, and what she normally does when she finds something that's not hers is that she just piles it right in the middle of the most critical point of my workspace so that it is impossible for me to ignore. So I did these prints, and I'm gonna tear them up because I don't really have space for them and I don't really need them. But before I did that, they kind of made me think of something that might be interesting to you. And remember, this has nothing to do with this film, the two topics of this film. This picture I like. It's interesting. It has meaning. Oh, and I've even signed it on the back. How obnoxious. Here's another picture. This is from a, uh, like a tourist shop downtown. These are all postcards. I think those pictures work pretty well together. Another picture I really like from the project. Oop, on semi-gloss. As you can see, hard to see. I like this picture a lot. It's a successful picture. I also made this picture of the same guy very, very shortly after I made that other picture. This is a successful picture. Here's where we start to devolve. Environmental portrait of the same man. Good picture? Meh. I'd give it a C. This isn't quite good enough for me. It's a little too basic, but when you're in the field and you're making pictures, you're building, building, building all the time. Epic fail. Barbed wire. Bad sky, not a good photo. Still made it, still printed it, and still signed it and put a title on the back, and, and I even additioned it as if someone would actually buy that. Talk about delusional. Anyway, that was just a little lesson in printing. When you're out, if you're, if you're me, and you're in the field with a camera, it's never onesie pictures, never. There's always, oh, this is a good picture, then there has to be others that will fit and form what we used to call a picture package. For those in the journalism world, the newspaper world, a picture package was a three to four picture story. That is minimum, three to four pictures, minimum to get a little story together. Normally you're looking for a 50 pictures. You're talking multi-year project, but that of course doesn't happen for me anymore. But hypothetically in my mind, that guy, that photojournalist in the vest and the scarf, Nick Nolte in Under Fire, that's me in my head, uh, but that's not me in real life. On another completely tangential side note, got a new bag, Shimoda Explore More 25 liter. I love it so far, it's built like a tank, and my needs have changed. Now, I was using this as my Normal everyday pack. Yes, this pack that has absolutely zero protection. This is a Cotopaxi day pack, which is also an amazing backpack for what it's designed for. I love this. It's starting to wear out and rot on the bottom, but it has no protection as you can see. And my cameras were taking kind of a beating, even though it was super lightweight, which I like, but the straps weren't really designed for carrying the kind of weight I was carrying. The Shimoda seems really good so far, but I will be doing a full product review. Just kidding, not really gonna do that. I am gonna mention something about my bags at some point because I have a bag fetish like all photographers and I use two different kinds of bags for two different reasons. And I wanna uh, detail those because I get 10 zillion questions about that through a variety of channels. But this film today is a simple thank you. Somehow, I have amassed 10,000 YouTube subscribers. Now, you, you, I cannot emphasize this enough. March 18th-ish of 2020, COVID hits. I'm here in New Mexico. Blurb reaches out and says, can you make motion content? And I'm like, I don't know, can I? Is this a trick question? I'm a still photographer. I don't make motion content. I, I'll try it. I, I need to learn it. I want to learn it. And I think maybe I have some relevant information. So that's what the whole YouTube thing started as. I never came to YouTube as someone saying, I'm gonna try to get as many subscriptions as I can 
as many likes. I'm going to be an official YouTuber. I would be, I am what I would call a reluctant YouTuber. I think the community aspect of YouTube is interesting because 62% of all the, all the, uh, subscribers are from overseas. So as an American, that's a very interesting way to connect with people from varying cultures and climates around the world. I think that is interesting. I've also learned over the past 18 months, 16 months, that the photo education component of YouTube, in my opinion, is severely lacking when it comes to the actual acts and art of photography, if you want to call it art, applied science, the educational components and also the imagery side of photography. So much of it is dictated and dedicated by the technology folks or those who are talking and reviewing cameras and equipment and all that stuff, which I find very, very, uh, very kind of boring. I think when you're fascinated by things like camera reviews and unboxing videos and that stuff, I think that's an indicator that you have yet to fall in love with the actual images. And I think once you fall in love with images, the rest of it just falls away. And I think every young photographer typically goes through that phase where you want the vest, you want the scarf, you want the specific camera, you want to put a piece of red tape on one of them so that signifies the camera that's going to have color in it. Bear with me, this is what we used to do back in the film era. It was all dumb, it was all nonsense, but we all did it because we just got sucked into the idea of being a photographer. Then we went into the field and realized, man, this is a hell of a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Then you start doing assignments for other people and they're not shy about telling you you haven't done a good job or you're not good enough to be able to be a photographer. So I think this side of photography is lacking in YouTube and I think that I've maybe been able to provide a little glimpse, a little, a little door opening, a little window into some of the realities of being a photographer. So for that, all right, I think that's a, that's a cool thing. If I'm sharing information that I somehow scratched together over the years that's relevant to other people, then so be it. So I just want to say thank you for all the people who've subscribed. I still can't really believe that. I don't think having 10,000 subscribers really does anything or changes anything with YouTube. My channel is monetized, but the amount of revenue coming in from the YouTube monetization is so minimal, I don't even think about it. I don't look at the monetization, I don't pay attention to it, I don't track it, I don't try to increase it because it's so minimal, it doesn't have any bearing on my life whatsoever. And I think that's probably a healthy way of looking at it. I think if I was to try to monetize heavily, that algorithm would dictate to me so specifically the kinds of content that, that would be returning revenue. And most of the time, it's the exact content I just described, which is all the stuff I'm not interested in. So I'm sort of in a catch-22 with this. I don't know how much longer this will last. Uh, if Blurb were to come to me and say, look, we don't need motion content, I would seriously consider stopping uh, making YouTube films, but I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Motion is the flavor of the day for pretty much every brand that I'm associated with. Having said that, moving on to point number two, this morning, today is September 9th, and this morning at 10 o'clock Pacific time, Blurb started a new series launched on social media called From the Van with Dan. I'll put a link below because that's what we do on YouTube. So From the Van, From the Van with Dan is a series that started about halfway through my last road trip, which was a seven week, 6,000 mile trip, which I've been documenting with several different films. And the outside creative agency came and said, look, we've seen some of the films that you're doing on this road trip. Now, I was completely shocked. In my head, I was like, why would anyone from that agency or anyone from Blurb, for that matter, be watching any of these films that I'm doing? Because they're kind of weird films. I do them basically for me. And then if some of you actually like them, then that's wonderful. But it's basically these things that are percolating in my brain that I put out onto YouTube. And it's just fun for me. So they said, look, we like, we like some of this stuff. Would you consider doing an official series for us called, you know, we'll come up with a name and a hashtag and all that stuff. And I said, of course, I said from day one, I work full time for Blurb. That's my primary uh, position in life. And I am always open to virtually anything that Blurb is going to throw at me. It's been that way for 11 years. Um, very, very rarely have I had to say, no, that's not really something that I want to do. So this was, of course, easy and interesting because I'm already in the van and I'm already making this stuff. Now, because they have different requirements and stipulations as a brand, I cannot produce the same kind of films that I'm doing for myself. I cannot produce those for them. The films that I'm going to produce for this series for Blurb are much, much shorter. They're going to be a minute or less because that fits the confinements of what they need. And I'm not here to be a jerk and say, hey, my films are 30 minutes long and it's me rambling nonstop online. It doesn't matter. I will make what's required for the mission. And uh, like I said, this morning at 10 o'clock Pacific time, the first sort of teaser tweet with the trailer went out on Twitter. 
I think it might have gone out on Instagram, Facebook. I don't know because I'm not on those platforms. So I will be posting uh, what I would call the long form versions of what I'm going to be making for them. I'm going to do long form versions that I'm going to post here because as you know, there's only so much you can do in 60 seconds. And so some of the things and films that I'm gonna be making for them are about topics that I probably would not make on my own, but uh, I do after all work for them. They are paying the bills and I love the people I work with and I love the company and I love the product and I have for 11 years. And I'm, a, I'm not just a spokesman for the company, I'm a user of the product too. So anyway, that was point one was thank you for anyone who's subscribed uh, I'm going to continue to pr produce content, at least for the foreseeable future, unless something weird happens, a meteor, maybe, I don't know, some other crazy thing happening in the world. I don't know. And the second part was to say, hey, From the Van with Dan is going to be this campaign. There's a trailer, there's a bumper, there's some animations, there's a logo. The outside agency did a real bang up job on that, and they did it so incredibly quick, quickly that uh, I was kind of astounded. It would have taken me a month to do what they did in a couple of days. So what did we learn? I got a new backpack that I haven't fully used yet, but so far it feels fine. It feels like a tank. Number two, my allergies are driving me insane today. Ooh, I probably sneezed 20 times today. I like a good sneeze. Do you admit it? You like sneezing? I love sneezing. I don't know why. Now, apparently it's as close to dying as we get as humans without actually dying. Is that true? Can anyone illuminate that for me? Enlighten me? What else did we learn? I say thank you when thanks is, is deserved, and it is in this particular case. And also, From the Van with Dan is a new series, and uh, we will go from there. Oh, last thing. My handy iPhone 12, my communication device, because I am incredibly high tech, as all of you know. I have been texting with someone who is an artist here in New Mexico, someone I love. I like him as a person, and I love his work. In fact, that's his and that's his. And he just reached out and said, hey, I've been texting with a mutual friend, just wanted to say, hi, how you're doing? And I said, I'm doing just fine. I said, you know, I'm making, I'm making films now. I said, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm good at it, but I'm making films and I really wanna make a film about you. And he said, I'm down, I'm game. And so come October, when I get back from the next road trip, I will be starting a new series of films on creatives. And these, he happens to be a painter, but I'll be doing photographers and writers and environmentalists and anyone that I think is interesting and worthy of a film. And I am going to try to make films that reflect what's in here, the sickness that's in here. So do not expect 4K cinematic shots of me with a 20 year old in a bikini on a thing in Bali. I'm not going there. There's no FPV. There's probably gonna be no drone there's probably not gonna be anything higher than 1080 resolution because I don't have a computer that will even touch 4K. So don't get your expectation levels up. What you should expect is weird. I guarantee they will be weird and they will be different from the films that you've seen before. So that's exciting. I got that going for me, which is nice.